Let's keep the end. Stella, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Um, I was telling a journalist today that whenever I'm uh, in front of you, in front of a, a big distinguished audience receiving a prize on Julian's behalf, I feel guilty. I feel guilty because it should be Julian who is standing before you, not me. And especially in institutions who commemorate um, peace and justice and truth. And certainly today, the Sakharov Prize and uh, the finalists represent um, peace, truth, and justice. I don't know if you know, but um, there were several requests to Julian's, to the prison where Julian is being held, a large prison, for Julian to actually be able to uh, participate by a video conference for example, right now, but also to the political group meetings that we're having after this and tomorrow, uh, because it was important for uh, the politicians who sit in the parliament here to hear from Julian about his situation. And formally, there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to speak to you. He is being held on remand in administer administrative detention. He is not serving a prison sentence. He is simply being kept away from you, and that is the reality. Whatever the administrative excuse is given, that is given, um, he is not able to speak freely, um, even when um, members of the European Parliament or political groups um, of this Parliament formally request his presence via video link. Today has been so important because um, the recognition of Julian is one of the three top issues in 2022 as far as the European Parliament is concerned um, by giving him the finalist status uh, of the European Union's peak human rights and, and freedom of thought award um, has shown, has signaled uh, politically that this case matters to the European Union, to, to European citizens and to the European press. It is now for the European institutions to understand that they have a clear mandate from the European Parliament to take on this case and to advocate for Julian's release. They do not stand alone. The Australian Prime Minister is now saying publicly that he is um, calling on his US counterparts to end this, to release Julian. Uh, the United Nations has spent years saying that this is a politically motivated case, that Julian has been subjected to psychological torture, and that this case is an, a threat to global press freedom. The Council of Europe, Human Rights Commissioner Dunja Mijatovic, um, and also the Freedom of Expression uh, Commissioner of the Council of Europe. There are, um, there is a, a consensus among all the defenders of human rights and press freedom that this case is an affront to the most basic tenets of a free and open democratic society. It goes right to the heart of having an open press where you can expose uh, wrongdoing at the highest levels. And so uh, defending Julian and defending his freedom, calling on his release, would simply mean aligning the European Union's position to the Charter of Fundamental Freedoms. Um, I hope that uh, the European institutions now take uh, this uh, a clear position. They have the legitimacy from their own parliament to take a strong position. Um, and that's what it will take, because this is a political case. It requires political pressure on the European Union's close ally, the United States, because the United States gets it all the time from their um, um, rivals, enemies, and so on. What about Assange? What are you doing to Assange? Don't tell us what to do with our journalists because you have Assange in prison. But actually, imprisoning Julian is the greatest test for Western values. As long as he remains in prison, this is a abject failure of democracy and of uh, human rights in the West. Julian has to be released. Thank you, Stella.
if you'd like to raise a question for our speakers, we are glad to take them. Also online, Eleonora Vasquez Euractiv, please. Uh, thank you, thank you for this very interesting press conference. I have a question for, uh, lo dico in italiano direttamente, e una uh, domanda per le onorevoli. Um, diciamo, questo caso uh, ovviamente sta portando Uh, a gala tutti i difetti della, della democrazia come stava appunto dicendo uh, Stella e cosa può fare secondo voi il Parlamento europeo per combattere uh, per avere dei sistemi di estradizione uh, più giusti tra l'Unione Europea e gli Stati Uniti in particolare anche per esempio due e se ci sono delle uh, proposte uh, in questo momento uh, chi vuole rispondere? Chi sa Sabrina? Prego. Ma, eh, il problema è che il caso Assange non è un, eh, un problema del, della legislazione degli Stati Uniti e del rapporto con l'Unione Europea in sé, è proprio un caso a parte, un caso politico eh, molto particolare e quindi in effetti il Parlamento Europeo dovrebbe essere un prendere una posizione molto più forte su questo, dovrebbe pretendere dagli Stati Uniti la, eh, la caduta delle accuse eh, su Assange, che sono accuse che vengono mosse secondo l'espionage act, il diavolo, quindi non può far valere il diritto di cronaca come eh, difesa e quindi eh, il Parlamento europeo dovrebbe pretendere questo, dovrebbe pretendere la caduta delle accuse e eh, quindi la liberazione di Assange. Questo secondo me è il punto di vista. Sul, sul fatto che ci siano dei negoziati per regolamentazioni non, non è immediato, questo è proprio un caso politico a parte. Can you one more question? Ah, Sabrina, Tiziana, sorry. Eh, rispondo anche io in italiano. Eh, chiaramente il problema delle estradizioni, il problema legato eh, ai sistemi giuridici non può toccare direttamente il Parlamento europeo o le istituzioni dell'Unione Europea in quanto tale, per ovvi, per ovvi motivi, ma è anche vero che l'Unione Europea in diversi casi, per quelle che sono le sue competenze esclusive, fa valere la sua grande forza e la sua grande potenza. Penso a vari negoziati commerciali eh, dove i capitoli sui diritti umani eh, vengono spesso considerati anche fondamentali, dove alcuni atteggiamenti o, o alcune eh, misure all'estero, laddove conviene, lasciatemelo dire, vengono prese in considerazione. Ecco, forse bisognerebbe eh, eh, lasciare stare laddove conviene, ma adottare un certo tipo di principio, se è un valore fondante dell'Unione Europea, sempre e in ogni caso. Grazie. Please. Please. Oui, bon, bonjour. Euh, quelle est la prochaine étape judiciaire euh, au Royaume-Uni Je pense que c'est pour vous. Oui, pour vous, pardon. Oui, c'est pour vous, pardon. Oui, c'est là. Julian est uh, currently awaiting une décision by the UK High Court about whether the High Court will hear his appeal. Uh, it is not an automatic right. Uh, the um, application has been um, several months um, pending and the decision by the High Court about whether there will be an appeal is expected at any moment. Um, there is uh, an application before the European Court of Human Rights, uh, but that is not a, a, let's say it's not live, uh, where we need to um, to uh, uh, finish the process in the United Kingdom, and hopefully it, wouldn't, it won't lead to a European Court of Human Rights case, because the UK courts um, have the power and definitely should do the obvious thing, which is to stop this extradition, especially after news reports, investigations, that um, the US government was planning to assassinate Julian while he was inside the embassy. Uh, it is clear that the United Kingdom should not be extraditing Julian Assange, a publisher, to the United States. But regardless of all the press freedom um, arguments and, the, and uh, the political motivations of this case, um, just a single fact 
um, that the Trump administration was um, elaborating plans to assassinate Julian should be sufficient to stop this extradition. And if the UK courts allow Julian's extradition in spite of uh, this information being known, uh, they're really um, putting their credibility on the line. Thank you. We have a question from a journalist connected online, Stefania Maurizzi from Italy. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> um, connected from Italy, I'm Stefania Maurizzi from Fatto Quotidiano. I would like to ask to, the, um, to Sabrina Pignadoli whether they plan to call on the Biden administration to drop the case and to affirm that the right to expose war crimes is uh, a fundamental right for journalists around the world. Sì, c'è arrivata dal eh, gruppo dei verdi, è arrivata oggi una lettera da inviare a Biden che eh, ho già eh, fermato e appunto per noi ho immagino tutta la delegazione e per cercare di fare pressione appunto come parlamentari anche da questo punto di vista. Credo che sia un atto di gusto, credo che sia un'iniziativa un molto importante e speriamo che venga, venga ascoltata perché è un'iniziativa fondamentale per eh, la nostra libertà e per le nostre democrazie. Grazie Stefano. Grazie. A few more, a few more questions. No? That's it? Okay. Thank you everyone. Bye. Uh, uh.